So, Don, we got a uh, jet-setting rye here that's, uh, that's got a little bit of a Michigan connection, I hear. Not only Michigan, but Colorado and Tennessee, and it has some antique history behind it, too. You're going to want to find out about this one. Hi, welcome to this week's edition of What's New at Charlie's. Well, What's New at Charlie's this week is one Don and I have been looking for for a long time. We read an article about this. My good friend, Mr. Don Williams of Bourbon Fool. Don, we read an article about this at least a year ago, maybe two, and we were fascinated by the... Uh, so this is a uh, collaboration with the Leopold Brothers, and they use a three-chamber still, which was a... You're probably better off to describe. What, what's a three-chamber still? Charlie, this whiskey right here, we could talk about this for two hours. There's so much going on yeah. around this bottle. We won't. Don't turn it off. But what? And, 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 and it's exciting. Uh, Leopold Brothers created a three-chamber still. They found some plans from a, a still that would have been in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah, so that's how they would have made it back in the old days. Yeah. And not only did they have to go to our good friends at Vendome Copper to build it, mm -hmm. they had to then learn how to operate it because it has a very specific mode of operation, Yeah, uh, different than other stills. And what they've done is they have gone to our good friends at Cascade Hollow, George Dickel, yep. and they have taken some of their, what I'm going to call antique rye, just my term, yeah, and blend it with the Cascade Hollow rye, and that's where this specialty collaboration yeah. comes in. So it's a in. collaboration between George Dickel and the Leopold Brothers. So Correct. Leopold Brothers, now we teased it in the thing. The Todd Leopold studied in Europe. He did in breweries and distilleries. He's got a very diverse background. Yeah, but he came from Michigan. That's true. And then he left Michigan. He did. He went to Colorado. I think maybe they didn't fix the roads fast. I'm Probably. not sure. Yeah, yeah, we're fixing the damn roads. You can come back, Todd. Um, but anyway, yes. Um, so, you know, so it's got a little bit of a Michigan connection. But, you know, we read this article a long time ago how they, re they built this still and they were distilling it the old-fashioned way, and we were fascinated by it at the time. And, and we've looked for it for a long time. It's just now come to Michigan, and I've been able to get a hold of it. So To, to give you just a taste of this, because I'll probably write a longer blog post about this, yep. they have their own malting room in Colorado, which is very unique, and they use an heirloom rye. A bruzy rye. And Todd Leopold says that the abruzzi rye has less starch, which takes out, which eliminates taking out more flavor. Okay. More starch takes out more flavor. This is a way to enhance the flavor profile. I think it's really amazing. It's a hundred proof, and I can't wait to taste it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open it up while we keep talking. So, um, uh, Nicole Austin is the master distiller at Cascade Hollow. She yeah. is. So she is. She was involved with this. She's got a pretty cool history. Like oh, yeah. I said, there's just a ton of stuff we could talk about. Oh, it, well, let's just drink it. And just... This this one is really intriguing to me. Time to front of the ball. There you go. Cheers, my Cheers. friend. Let's see what we got here. There's an aroma there, almost, almost yeah. fruity, right, or something. Very right? fruity. Very fruity. Right? Very fruity. Yeah. I haven't tasted it yet, but just. Floral, sweet, yeah. Dark fruit. The spice kind of kicks in late at the end. Yeah, it, it, it it's really not your typical rye whiskey. That's no, for sure. Not for sure. Hmm. Almost has a little peated flavor, but that's probably the malted barley.
and they use floor malt, and I'm not even going to go into that, but right. they use floor malt. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, this is amazing, and for those of you who haven't looked at Leopold Brothers' story, they do a lot of very traditional things, and their approach to the three-chamber still is to do things the way they would have done it, you know, at the turn of the last century. Yeah. And this is an, a really unique product. Uh, is this hard to find? I think so. I think so. I don't think it's going to be everywhere, but I have seen it in a couple stores. Now, I can't help myself, but I am going to tell you one other fascinating thing uh -huh. that Leopold Brothers does that I haven't found anywhere else. Yeah. They have barrel warehouses that have earthen floors. Okay, all right. I've never seen that before. And their idea is that the natural humidity from the ground helps the barrels, reduces evaporation. Okay, all right. And the interesting thing is they do low barrel entry proof. I was just going to say that, yeah. And their claim is that it goes into the barrel at about 100 and comes out at about 100, which means you know, their barrel proof is 100, which is low in the industry. Sure, absolutely. But yes. that is a very smooth whiskey. They're very smooth. So so this is basically barrel strength then. It, that's at their that. barrel strength. Yeah. That is wow. correct. Nice. Well, Don, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it, it is. And... and it is a really amazing story, and, and like I said, I probably am going to end up doing a longer blog post, but this was a treat to find yes, and a treat to try, and uh, to the Leopold brothers and to the people at Cascade Hollow, I think you've done a great job here. Come back to Michigan, Todd. Come on. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, everyone.